What's up guys, Eric here from LED Grow Lights Depot. This review will cover the new Nextlight Mega Pro released May 2021. Stay tuned for a full review, part testing, and my final thoughts on this fixture. The Nextlight Mega Pro is part of the new Nextlight Pro series. The Pro series is an upgrade to the Nextlight Commercial series. The Mega, Core, and Veg8 all got a facelift. The series now includes a greenhouse top light called the Pro Plus. The entire series integrates with a Nextlight Control Pro controller. More on that later. Lastly, the Adapt Pro can be used to integrate this series with a third-party controller. Let me tell you more about the Mega Pro. The fixture's dimensions are 37.75 by 36.75 by 3.25 inches, and it weighs 26 pounds. When the Mega Pro is boxed up, it's folded in half. To use the fixture, simply unfold it and hang it up with the included wire hangers, ratchet hangers are not included, to expose the wide form factor. The Mega Pro is all aluminum and has a minimalist look. The drivers and central control lie in the middle of the unit, while three LED boards sit on each side. I like that Nextlight stuck with this design, which is similar to the previous Mega. It's a breath of fresh air in an LED market crowded by bar-style fixtures. It's a very versatile fixture and can be used in open rooms, over benches, in racks, or grow tents. There are no cooling fans. The unit is passively cooled. The wide aluminum design allows for maximum heat dissipation. There's a small gap between the back of the PCBs and the top layer of aluminum, which allows for air circulation to help cool the diodes. When you purchase the Mega, you can choose between four different style plugs, 120 volt, 240 volt, and two types of 277 volt attached to a 10 foot cord. In the box, you will also find a 10 foot control cable to link the fixtures for central control while using the controller. The Mega Pro has built-in electronic dimming control buttons, dimmable from 100% to 75%, 50%, 25%, and off. Without the controller, you have pretty good control over the light intensity. However, with a controller, you have even better control of the dimming, as you can dim from 0 to 100% intensity, along with controlling the timing and creating a sunrise-sunset effect. Each of the two channels allows for 250 fixtures for a total of 500 fixtures per controller. Nextlight was one of the first companies to use a full white light spectrum in their fixtures. In a way, they pioneered the use of this type of spectrum and brought it into the mainstream. Many other LED grow lights before Nextlight's white light spectrum seem to still be focusing on red and blue or blurple LED grow lights. Looking at the spectrum graph, you can see that their spectrum lies at around 4000K color temperature, which is great for seedling to harvest growth. This is the same spectrum that they have been using since the beginning. They have not altered the spectrum at all, while other companies have used the spectrum model and added other wavelengths to enhance the spectrum, including UV, deep red, and or far red. Nextlight is a bit of a maverick in the space and have kept it simple by not adding deep red. According to their website, Nextlight's full spectrum is very similar to LED competitors with added red. Nextlight chooses to place more energy wattage toward the green and blue rather than the red bandwidth of light. This is for a significant reason. Adding red is an easy way to pad efficiency statistics. Red is known to be more electrically efficient than other bandwidths of light. However, red is arguably less photosynthetically efficient in bright white conditions. Additionally, this added red is known to degrade the light fixture at a more rapid rate. Nextlight is correct in that red does increase the efficacy of the fixture. Red is actually more photosynthetically efficient, but in bright white conditions, red and blue get absorbed at the top layer of the leaf and green light gets absorbed deeper. The source of these studies can be found in the description. I personally haven't heard that red diodes degrade quicker than white diodes, but I'm sure Nextlight has done the research on this. I will say that many LED fixtures have deep red diodes in them, and there are benefits to this. I'll leave the discussion as is. It's debatable and a bit outside the scope of this review. But to sum this up, over the years, I guarantee that Nextlight has received positive yield and quality feedback from their growers. If the feedback has been excellent, why change the spectrum? Moving on. Nextlight does not reveal the brand and model of diodes that are used in the Mega Pro or entire Pro series. My best guess is that they're using Samsung diodes. Furthermore, they do not mention which brand and model of driver is used. It seems that they care more about the performance of these components as is indicated by the total light output and par efficacy, and I agree with them on this. Too many growers get focused on the brand and model of these components. If you buy a light from a trusted company, they will use good components. It's more important to look at the fixture at a system level, not a component level. 
There is so much that you can tell about a light just by knowing its total light output and PAR efficacy. For reference, these two things are system level specifications. The total light output of the Mega Pro is 1,650 micromoles per second with a PAR efficacy of 2.6 micromoles per joule. At this light output, a Mega Pro will cover a strong 4x4 or up to a 5x5 flowering area. Hanging height will vary between applications, but most growers can expect to hang this light around 18 to 24 inches from their crops at full intensity. During veg, you can dim the light down to 50% or hang the fixtures 30 to 36 inches above the canopy. The Mega Pro draws 640 watts at the wall and 5.34 amps at 120 volts and 2.67 amps at 240 volts, according to Nextlight's specs. I measure the wattage draw at the wall with a kilowatt meter. At 115 volts, I received a reading of 658 watts with an amperage of 5.72. The auto sensing driver will accept voltages from 100 to 277 volts AC. All you need to do is change or select the plug type for your application. Expect a heat output of 2,183 BTUs per hour from a single fixture or around 36% less heat than a 1,000 watt HID fixture. Nextlight is a US company and is located in Ohio. The lights are DLC Hort listed, UL8800, IP65 wet rated, and come with a five year manufacturer's warranty, good down to the diode. Nextlight has some of the best customer service in the industry and a proven track record of helping customers out quickly when they need it most. I used a temperature gun to get some temperature readings on the Nextlight Mega Pro. In this first section, which is closer to the open door where I'm taking the temperature readings from, you can see that we're hitting just under 100 degrees. And it looks like the driver is right around 95 degrees. And the back section showing just over 100 degrees. So on average, this fixture runs at about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. At the time of this review, since the light is quite new, Nextlight does not have PAR readings for the Mega Pro. Here are my PAR readings that I took of the Mega Pro in a 4x4 Gorilla Grow tent. Since the tent contains a reflective floor and walls, the readings may be a bit different compared to what you would find in an open area, but not too different from what you would see in a larger grow room with several Mega Pros with overlapping light footprints. The first out of four readings is going to be at 36 inches. Right in the center, we are hitting about 760 ppfd. At the back, about 650. Into the left corner, about 582. And this other side, just under 600. So I don't recommend flowering at this height but this is a good veg height, and it also allows you to see the penetration that you're gonna be getting at 36 inches away from the light. All right, just gonna move around here a little bit. And the next reading is at 24 inches. 24 inches, we are hitting about 990. To the back corner, about 820. Excuse me, back side I meant the back corner and then to this other side about 770 so I'd recommend this height for flowering uh, you can you're gonna see that also 18 inches will be a very good height you're gonna get the best intensity and uniformity in a 4x4 area at these distances all right and here's 18 inches about 1200 in the center you can see how that holds for a while until you hit the back side, just over 900. Back corner looks like about 700 and about 820 on the other side. So really good um, intensity here. Uniformity is pretty good as well. Uh, not as good as 24 inches. So, you know, if you keep the light at around 18 to 24 inches, you know, maybe like around uh, 22 inches or so or 20 inches, um, that would be the best distance and the last height is at 12 inches where we're hitting some really big numbers in the middle here and even in the back on the back side in the corner about 700 and this other side looks like about 860 so bad uniformity here um, but it wouldn't be horrible to flower at this distance it's just really uneven 
and a little high for most growers. You might be burning your plants um, if you don't know what you're doing. All right, and that wraps it up. What are my overall thoughts on the Nextlight Mega Pro? One, the fixture is very well constructed and looks really cool, but looking great can only go so far. Does it perform? Well, yes. The 1650 micromole per second light output is up there with other commercial fixtures, as is the 2.6 micromole per joule efficacy. While not the highest I've seen, these specs are still very competitive with LED grow lights that boast a similar light output, efficacy, and wattage draw. Two, the PAR readings on the Mega Pro are very good too. The light is not spread over several bars, so you just want to make sure that you have adequate space between the light and plant so the emitted light has enough distance to reach uniformity. Three, the control system on the Nextlight Pro series is very clean and easy to use for home or commercial growers. While the controller does not offer spectrum control, you can still manipulate most variables for nearly full control over the lighting. By just focusing on lighting with this controller and not adding in other sensors or adapters, Nextlight is shooting for ease and reliability. And four, their five-year warranty and customer support is excellent, so you don't have to worry if your fixture arrives damaged or has issues down the road. They have you covered and assist by shipping a replacement to your door quickly so your plants don't have to suffer. All of this for $1,275 MSRP. Now, what are some of the downsides of the Mega Pro? The biggest thing that stands out is that it doesn't have red diodes to enhance the spectrum. This is not a deal breaker, and as I mentioned earlier, they do this for a good reason, but it does seem a little against the grain compared to most other brands. Secondly, while I think the price is fairly justified given the controllability, quality build, performance, and warranty, the price may be out of the range of some growers looking to cover a 4x4 to 5x5 area. After seven years in the LED grow light industry, I strongly believe that you get what you pay for 95% of the time. Paying a little bit more from a trusted manufacturer pays off in the long run. There's a link for the Mega Pro product page in the description if you want to learn more or purchase this fixture. Check out that link for automatic discounts or email LED Grow Lights Depot for bulk quotes. These lights ship for free in the lower 48 states with no tax in the USA. Smash that like button and subscribe to be notified about more videos like this reviewing popular LED lights. And check out our other LED Grow Light reviews on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram at LED Grow Lights Depot for giveaways, sales, and other great content. Link below.